Now you're very welcome to What Matters programme with John Prendergast and my guest today of course is Aintoos, uh, Limerick Aintoos, very well known and a great, great lady activist, Sarah Beasley. Sarah, great to have you here today and thank you for joining me. And thanks John as always for having us on the programme. Now, um, there are so many issues but we want to get straight into it. The hospitalisation issue, the medical crisis, the trolley crisis is phenomenal at the moment but you have an indication there Sarah a chart that gives us a very clear indication of what it was like a few years ago in comparison to what it is today I have John here we have actually compiled back in 1980 there was 10 beds per 1000 people okay in, Ireland in this mm -hmm. country and then you switch to 2021 and yes. it's two plus yep. a little bit beds so you can see there's a massive comparison here yes. um, of the lack of the amount of beds that have yes. disappeared. And capacity is at the heart of this crisis at the yes. moment. Yes, yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm not one, people don't know me for talking about the trolley crisis. There's so many people talking about it, but it's everyone's individuals. Um, everyone has to talk about it. Yes. Um, it needs to be on the airwaves. And, of course, Limerick is being seen. Yes. Um, by far as the worst and it, but it's around the whole country like I was talking to a consultant today and he said he finds it very unfair that uh, national media providers are focusing on Limerick he said it's the same in the matter it's the same in Galway we have a huge crisis on our hands and it's not because people are getting sicker that's just a complete um, red herring ridiculous statement from the minister yes it's the fact that we don't have beds to deal with the people that are ill and the fact is that when they closed down the three really important a &Es, which were standing outside of one st john's and then ennis and nina in 2009 how did they think they were going to cope with the midwest and with the rising population in this country absolutely crazy but i I, 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 can't, I can't get to grips with this. We have highly qualified people in the government, the HSE, and they have bodies out there like the INMO and other bodies, the, the, the consultants groups. What is happening that nobody is talking to each other? I, I don't understand. There was one consultant that said, quick solution, easy solution, expensive solution, 5,000 beds. That's the end of it for a temporary period. Why isn't the minister doing his job. I have no idea and every time he comes out uh, and speaks to the press it's a completely different thing that he's saying. So yes. I don't think the Minister of Health knows how to deal with the situation but they should be talking. They all need to sit down in the room and say where has it gone wrong and how do we fix it and we need a quick fix. People are dying yes. in beds, in hospital beds in Ireland at the moment and you know if it was one of my family members or oh, I would reign in hell fire down on this government I really would well I'll tell you you see I, I, I don't want to condone aggressive behavior <clears throat> it's not in your vocabulary or on mine or many people but there was an incident in Galway where bags of manure were thrown at two ministers out of desperation out of anger so this is now the anti-political atmosphere that this country has arrived at we're not condoning it but politicians and the HSE need to be very much aware that the anger is going to go out onto the streets very shortly if they're not careful. Definitely. Now, there is um, a non-political protest on the 21st of this <coughs> month, um, and that is against the dis disgust of what's happening in our uh, trolley crisis in Limerick. And I believe people from Tipperary and Clare are getting involved in that as well. It'll be a people's protest. So we're really telling people, get behind this uh, campaign. Um, and, I, and I understand why they don't want politicians. What have politicians done so far to help this situation? Okay, we'll leave it at that for part one. Join us for part two very shortly.